Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Good to see you again. So today's episode, I'm going to be talking about a modification that I made in my Coachman 20XG. And I'm going to show you how I installed this futon right here in place of the dinette. Now, before we get started, a couple of things you ought to know. So I have a 2020 Coachman 20XG Crosstrek. So if you don't have that exact model and year, things may differ. And even if you do have that same model and year, things could be slightly different as well. Mine was built in early July of 2019. So I have an early model year unit. I know that there's already some differences in the later model year units from that year, because uh, I've seen some of these online where mine's not quite the same as somebody else's that was built later in uh, the model year. So there could be some differences. You'll have to check that out on your own. And remember, I'm just showing you what I did. So by no means is this the right way. This is just my way and I'll show you how I installed it. So let's get started. Okay, so a, a few things to note on my installation. So on the dinette bench, you are not gonna have this door. Probably nobody has this door because I added that door. I wanted to be able to access the dinette bench from the side without having to lift up the cushion. So even when I had the dinette, I had this door. Now, you're not gonna find another door like that unless you have an old travel trailer that has a door like that. Um, I, I did some work on a travel trailer years ago and I saved parts. This door happened to be a perfect size for here and the color is close enough for me. It's not an exact match, but it's pretty darn close. So I was happy with it. And I just cut out the paneling behind it and screwed on the door and finished up the edges inside and uh, made that door. So I can access that without ever having to worry about lifting up the futon to access underneath the dinette bench. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on with this panel. We got a few things going on because as you can tell, this is not the factory setup. So on this panel, I did a few things. One, let's talk about the vent. So the vent I added, I also added this switch so there's a fan behind that vent and that vent and fan is to help circulate the air in that inverter compartment. There's a nice big vent on the front here, but I found that even in the warm weather, sometimes it would kick off due to too, too, too high of a temperature. So I put this in to help circulate air through and it does help. Now it's not perfect, but it helps. So, uh, you know, that's uh, something that you can think about doing if you wanna if you have that same problem. Now, next thing I did, the receptacle. So the receptacle used to be located right back there. And of course, with the futon, you're not gonna reach back there. And even with the dinette, I found it very inconvenient. So my wires were long enough. I never had to disconnect the wires from the receptacle. I was able just to pull it out of the panel and relocate it here in the front. Now, if you do that, you'll notice that behind that receptacle in the back, back here, on the inside of the compartment, there's a piece of plywood with a rectangle cut out. That's the size for this. You wanna pry that off and then reuse that behind the paneling up here. It's like a reinforcement. And you can just glue that to the inside of the paneling. That's all I did and so far it has worked great. Now, also back there, above the receptacle, there was a USB outlet. It was like a two USB outlets and a little panel. I eliminated that and I replaced it with this. So this one is a USB-C, USB, and a voltmeter. This one is just a 12 volt outlet. I wanted the convenience of a USB-C port because I have a device that takes USB-C. So this was my solution to do that. I also like the idea of adding a voltmeter. You can flip up that little cap and see what the voltage is on your battery. So, and, and that gives you a true voltage, uh, not just some readout with bars or lines or whatever it is on the other panel. So um, yeah, I like that. All right, the only other thing I did was I added this little holder. I did that whenever it was the dinette and uh, it just holds you know, the TV remote and whatever else you wanna put in that, you know. If you want to add that, that's fine, but uh, that's up to you. 
All right, well, that's everything for that side. Now let's talk about the installation of the futon itself. Okay, so let's talk about the futon itself and then we'll move into uh, how I installed it. So the futon itself measures about 65 by 32. Now I chose this size because it's just slightly shorter than the dinette area was originally. The depth also works out perfectly. Now I have the smaller dinette. The newer models have a bigger dinette. So this size might not work for you or you might have to mount a little bit different to make it work. So because I have the angled pantry, I did not want this corner to come out too far because I would have trouble opening the electric access panel down here if, if it came out too far. So this worked out perfectly for that reason. Now, like I mentioned, this is just a little bit shorter than the original dinette area. So I actually moved this bench in. The other thing that I did was, let me move the table out of the way here. So this end panel right here used to be taller and it used to come up about right here. So if you have one of these, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. And that's so that the cushion of the dinette could lean back against it. Now, I did not like that being so tall once I put the futon in. Fortunately, this panel just unscrews. You can get inside your bench and totally unscrew this panel. Take it off, cut off the bottom, and then make it this height. Now, I made it about 20 inches high, and that's just below the height of the futon, because I didn't want it to stick up, because if you know, you accidentally sit on that or something, um, you know, it hurts your rear end, so we, we didn't want that. All right, so I had to move the dinette bench in. Now, it just unscrews from the floor, and you just slide it in, you know, however far you need to slide it in. The other thing you have to do is unbolt the seat belts. That's what these bolts are on the floor, because you have to take them out. Unfortunately, that's what you're left with, if you want to put down some new flooring or something, that, that's your choice. I'm not going to. I just ran the bolts back in. There's threaded inserts in the floor. I just ran the bolts back in. Now, I also advise there's going to be some screw holes left. Just take a little bit of clear silicone and just uh, dab it in those holes. That'll seal up that floor, you know, in case you spill some water or something, it doesn't run down underneath your flooring. And uh, now I didn't do that around the screw, the bolt heads here, but I think I'm going to do that around the bolt heads as well. Now back on the wall, you'll see this panel that I installed. So this, this panel back here, this is a section that I cut off the bottom of this panel. The only reason that I installed that is I had installed some sound deadening material under the dinette bench on the wall. You can't peel that stuff off. So it was there and it's like a silver shiny color and it looked ugly. So I wanted to just cover it up. So this is what I did. I just cut this piece, uh, you know, that I cut and cut off the bottom of the side panel. And then I just screwed it to the wall and, and I think it looks fine. You know, I made it the same height as the wall here. It just goes right around the corner, fills in nicely. Now, wh while we're right here, we're going to talk about the dinette benches a little bit because you're going to have to remove a couple things. So these panels here are on the side of the dinette bench. You're going to have to remove those and you won't need those anymore. So, you know, you can do whatever you want to with them. But you're going to have these snaps and screws left over. So I reused one of those right here because there was a gap here that always bugged me. So I reused it and screwed that in there to hold it tight. Don't screw any down there because if you do that before you put this dinette bench here, you won't be able to get it back off. So don't put any down there, uh, just put it here. You know, I don't know if there's anything you'd ever have to service behind there, but I didn't want to take the chance. So that's what I did with it. All right, so now, we have the dinette bench moved in. Let's talk about that piece of plywood on top of the dinette bench. 
Those are both screwed down. I put two screws in each one so that the plywood on top of the dinette bench is now screwed down. You can't lift it up anymore. I did that for safety. And I'm gonna show you some other things I did for safety as well. Heaven forbid you should be in an accident with your unit. The least amount of stuff flying around, the better. Those two plywood panels could fly around. You never know in an accident what's gonna happen. Heaven forbid should it happen, but I always try to minimize anything that could fly around. So that's why I screwed those down. Now, that being said, it's also important to secure the futon because you don't want a futon flying up at you if you are in an accident. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. I'm not gonna say it's the safe way or the right way. This is just the idea that I came up with on how to fasten this futon in and still make it functional. Now the futon itself, in the position that it's in, will not recline because it's too close to the wall. Now there is some space, but it's not far enough away. I didn't want to let that big gap back there and let it out. So it is back as far as it goes. The back of the, of the futon base is against the wall right now. So down here, well, there again, I have all kinds of leftover trailer parts around. So, uh, you know, you might have to buy something here. So this unsnaps. And what that does is prevent the futon from sliding out. Now, you could go to the extent of getting undermount tracks and putting underneath the futon, you know, they're just like drawer slides only they're meant to mount flat. You can put those under the futon, fasten them to the top of the dinette bench, and this will glide in and out real nice and hold it in place. I considered doing that. It's going to raise the futon another inch or so. That wouldn't be bad. The futon is a little bit higher than the dinette benches. So you're going to have to weigh that for yourself. If you want to go that route, uh, that would probably be the, the best way to do it. I chose not to do it that way. I chose to do it just a little bit simpler method. And who knows, maybe in time I'll end up changing my mind and going that route. The nice thing, if you do this and you move the dinette bench in, the framework for the futon. So there's a wooden frame under here. There's a frame rail right here, right here, right here, and over at the end. So these frame rails actually line up. I didn't plan that, it's, it's just the way it happened. They line up with the ends of the dinette benches. So you could put four uh, glides under there and it would all line up perfectly. So if you wanna go that route, you know, that, that would be nice. You're still going to have to have some mechanism to keep the futon from sliding out when you drive because you, you don't want this thing sliding back and forth. So you're still going to have to put some so, sort of catch. Now, this is what I did. And I, the reason I did it this way was because I can lengthen this strap. So should I want to move the unit with the futon reclined in the bed position, I can do so just by lengthening this and then reattaching it. And, and so it'll stay. All right, so let's take a look behind the dinette. Or I'm sorry, behind the, the futon. So here is one of the seat belts that came with the unit. And this is just long enough to reach through. And it also happens to just line up. So there's like a, a half rounded notch in that plywood below this that's where I put the seatbelt up through on this side and on this side. Now, this side is attached where it came from on the factory. This side is not. So this seatbelt was actually on the inner bolt. I had to move it to the outer bolt that's under there. So there's two bolts there, okay? It was on this one. I had to move it to this one so that it would be long enough to buckle. And you can see it just reaches, but it's perfect. So this is a secure, the seatbelts are secure, you know, they're, they're bolted down to the floor. And so this is going to hold the futon down. Uh, I, you know, it's, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Of course it could move and, you know, 
Um, but I think, you know, normal driving and, and whatnot, this should stay in place without much trouble if you have the seatbelt here and the catch in the front. The other thing I did was I installed these L brackets. So there's two here on this side, there's two along the wall, there's two on that side. These L brackets also hold the futon base down. What this allows this to do, because the futon is not actually screwed into anything, it's just sitting here held down by the L brackets, the seat belt, and that buckle on the front. So I'll try to do this uh, one handed here. So I can just slide this out. And there we go. Now I have the bed. You have to have the back of the futon base fastened in some manner to use it like this. If you don't, and you sit on the front edge, your futon is going to flip forward. So the seat belt secures the base, the L brackets secure the base. Now, when the, when the bed's pulled out, there's only two L brackets that are against the base. So, you know, those other L brackets along the wall are not on the base anymore. It's just the other two in the seat belt. But, you know, uh, I'm a little bit, uh, hefty, you might say, and I can sit on the front of this. It's nice and sturdy. It's not going anywhere. Uh, so I think it'll be fine like that. However, if you want to ensure that it doesn't flip forward, there's something else you can do. So with your dinette table, there should have been two short poles. Those short poles, and I should have had them here, but, but I already took them back to the shop. Uh, they are the exact length to put underneath here down to the floor. So you could prop those legs underneath the front of this. Also, since you're not using the, the futon legs, which actually are too short, they're, they're a few inches too short to use for this. So you can't do that. But there's still bolts here. And you could uh, maybe have a way to fasten the table leg under here and let it under there all the time. Uh, you know, that's uh, that's up to you. I, I didn't want to do that. And if you would do that, you're going to block your door if you put a door in the end of the of the dinette bench there. So uh, I didn't want to block the door. And I think this is plenty sturdy. I, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So, all right. So let's set this back up. Okay, sorry about that. I had to use two hands to pull the back up. So it's a little bit easier to use two hands for it, but I didn't push it back yet. So let's take a look back behind the futon. And here you can see the seat belt again. All right, so, you know, it's still over the top. And if you're concerned about the buckle when you lay it down, there again, it just worked out. So the, the framework for this falls beside this, and this is just hollow. And it just pushes up a little bit. And so it's it's fine. It worked out that way. Maybe yours will work out. Maybe it won't. You know, you'll have to determine that for yourself. There you can see the bracket on the wall. Brackets there. Other brackets. Um, so that's the L brackets that I had. All right. And those were just some scrapped L brackets I had around. And so I just pushed this back. And if you can see down in there, it's a little hard to see. But it's back against the wall again. And then in the front, oops, all I have to do is buckle this and it'll hold it back. Now, I'm not going to buckle that because I want to show you something else I did. If you reach under here, you'll see my original table. So my original table, I actually cut a little bit shorter because I moved the dinette benches closer together it wouldn't fit in there anymore so I decided you know I'm not going to use it I cut some off now this edge I don't like and I do plan on putting something across there to make that more finished um, but that will come in time um, but right now I just uh, I just cut it off and then it stores right there on the original brackets Okay, and once I buckle this, that'll keep the table from sliding out. 
Now the table will still move. So I have a little bit more work there to do to make sure the table doesn't slide around under there. And I'll, I'll have to come up with a way to do that. Now, speaking of the table, so let's talk about some options. You do have some options when it comes to the table. And this is uh, the things I've thought of. You know, maybe you have your own idea and that'd be great. You can relocate those pockets in the floor to out here. Contact Coachman. They will send you the floor diagram so that you know where all of the studs are. I got it for my unit. I'm not going to share it because your unit may be different. They needed my full VIN number to find out the floor diagram to send me. So my guess is they have changed that in time. So send them your VIN and they will send you the floor diagram. That way, if you want to relocate these pockets for your table poles, you don't drill into a cross member or something else down there. You don't want to do that. So, but that will help you lay out where you can put those. I'm not going to do that. That would actually probably be the cheapest way to go. You can just relocate one of the poles. I think cutting the table down, you only need one, not two. And you can locate it wherever you like and put your table there. It's not that big of a table. So you're not going to sit, you know, you can probably sit three people, you know, tight together on the futon. You're not going to sit three at that table because you've cut it down shorter. The other problem with using the pole is your legs are going to hit it. And I didn't like that idea. So what I plan to do is order a lagoon mount. And I'm going to fasten the lagoon mount right here at this corner. That will allow this to come up. And then the table is just going to sit right in here. I can swing it out, swing it over, whatever. And I can adjust it up, down, you know, wherever I need it, wherever it's comfortable. Now, that'll be nice, um, you know, if you're traveling by yourself or you just need one person, that that's fine. That'll work out great. You could, you know, if you're just going to have a, a sandwich or something light, you know, two people could use it, but you know, you're not, you're not going to set a, a big meal out on it for sure. Uh, and I don't think any of these table options, you're going to do anything like that. Um, but you know, if you just need a place to eat a little something, it'll be fine. I, I think even for two people. Now, the other option you can do is a folding table. So I had this folding table and I thought it would work. However, it's too short. <laughs> it doesn't come up high enough. The legs are not long enough um, to actually make it work here in front of the futon. I was a little bit disappointed because that was my original plan. It's just like, ah, you know, for the times I eat inside, I'll just set up that folding table. But it's too short. Um, it, it's actually only about two inches higher than the seat of the futon. Uh, it would not work. What it does work for, though... Because my passenger seat spins around. So I have a swivel seat on the passenger side. It does work for that because the passenger seat sits lower. And I can use that folding table for sitting at the passenger seat. The other thing that I've, I've thought about. Now that this space is larger, I could make my driver's seat swivel around. You can get a swivel for them. You have to lower the parking brake handle because it's too tall to make the seat swivel. So you have to buy the adapter for that, lower that, and you can make your driver's seat swivel. I was thinking, you know, if, if I go that route, you know, now you can put your lagoon table here. You can use it here at the futon, or you could swivel around the driver's seat and use your, your lagoon table from the driver's seat, or possibly share it if you can find a middle ground for the height. Uh, you know, so that's an option as well. So you have a few options for your table. Um, I think they're all good options, uh, except for really reusing the post. I don't think that's a great option. But um, yeah, so that covers everything that I did to install the futon. If you have any questions, please, please just contact me and uh, I'll be trying to answer your questions and help you as best as I can.
All right, let's go back and talk about the futon again just a little bit. So the color of this one is called charcoal gray. It does have a slight blue tinge to it, but in my unit, I think it looks great. I have blue curtains I put in the front. My front seats have some blue stitching in, and, and I think it matches well. There are other choices available, and you can choose whatever color you like. I also chose this one because of the size. There is a second one that I looked at. It is also sold by Walmart. It is a little bit longer and it would work. However, you have to move the dinette bench forward. Now, when I looked at that one, my dinette bench came to about right in here. I had another inch or so that I could shove it up against this panel. It would actually have worked. I could have used that futon and moved the dinette bench forward about an inch and it would have worked. I didn't know that I liked that idea. Uh, this space here is already small. I was a little concerned about making that too small just because of the seat here. Uh, you know, if you want to recline it or, you know, your battery's under there. So if you need to get under there to get at your battery or something, I didn't want to make that space too small. So I opted to go with the futon that was a little bit shorter. And I like this choice. I think this was, for me, this was the best choice. Maybe for you, you would choose the other one. The other problem with that other futon that was longer, it was also deeper. So I was concerned back there at the electric panel that I wouldn't be able to get it open or that it'd be difficult to open. So I didn't like that idea. It also narrows the aisle and I like the wide aisle. So I'm, I'm happy that I don't have the big dinette. I like the small dinette because for me, it works out great. So all right, that was just a few other uh, options I wanted to point out and, and, you know, something to think about in your build. All right, there you go. That's how I installed this futon in place of that, my dinette. Remember, I have a 2020 Coachman Crosstrek 20XG. Your model may vary, but maybe this gives you some ideas on some improvement that you can do to yours. If you have this exact model, why well, you can probably use most of these ideas should you choose to do so. I'm not saying this is the right way, but it's the way I did it. And I think it's gonna work out for the way that I use my RV. So good luck to you, happy travels, safe camping, and we'll see you on down the road. Make sure you click like and subscribe if you'd like to see more from the channel.